Hey everyone, I'm Danny. And I'm Andy, and today we've got a really fun packed session to help you guys think about moving to secondary school. It's a big step and it can seem really daunting and scary, but we know that if you're ready to go into, into it with the best attitude you can, it can be a really enjoyable transition. So today we have some young people who, some of them you know, and some of them you won't know, and they've already been through secondary school, they're there now. And not only have they survived, but they have thrived and they've enjoyed their secondary school experience. So we've got some friendly advice to share with you today. That's right, and along with this, you should also have your book with you, which is your It's Your Move um, Survival Guide um, to Secondary School. Uh, and in this book, there's loads of uh, fun th activities and things and advice and top tips that you can look at. Um, this is your book to go through. Um, so I really wanted to encourage you to fill this out, read through it, um, do, do some of the games, do some of the activities, and really make this your own as you think about heading into secondary school. But um, we are going to use this today as well, so we're going to be referring to this book a lot. So keep this on you as we go forward. Okay, but first we're going to start with a game and we're going to look at phobias. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a different phobia and you're going to shout out, if you're in school or if you're at home, just shout the answer out um, of what the phobia is. So you're going to have three different options that are going to come up on the screen. Okay, so the first one, arachnophobia is the fear of what? So is it spiders? Is it anorax or is it archways? I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, so arachnophobia is the fear of spiders. Well done if you got that right. Okay, are we ready for the next one? So the next one is a word that is hard to pronounce, but not as hard as the next one after that. So um, is skull, scolionophobia. <laughs> Maybe. Um, okay, so is that the fear of skulls? Is it the fear of lions? Or is it the fear of school? Okay, so again, if you shout those answers out. So that's the fear of schools. Okay, this one's even worse than the last one. Um, so, <laughs> um, hippopotomostrosequis... Deliophobia, it's on the screen so you can read that instead. Is that the fear of, is it the fear of hippos? Is it the fear of long words? Or is it the fear of monsters? That's a tricky one, I think. So that one is the fear of long words. Well done if you got that one. Right, the next one is uh, genuphobia. Okay, so, or genuphobia, is that the fear of clever people? Is it the fear of knees? Or is it the fear of people with the name Gen? Genuphobia. I'll give you five seconds to guess that one. So you should again, shout your answers out. So that is the fear of knees. What a strange thing to have a fear of. Um, and the last one, okay. So this one is bathmophobia, okay. So is that the fear of stairs? Is it the fear of being clean? Or is it the fear of baths? So a few seconds. So that one is the fear of stairs. So if you got all of them right, if you got any of them right, well done you. So I'm sure you have lots of different emotions right now about going to your new school. So you might be feeling a bit scared. You might be feeling a bit worried, sad, happy as well, hopefully, and excited to, to start your new school. And I'm sure you've got lots of memories about your current school that you're at now and loads of different thoughts and ideas about the new school you're going to go to. And it's good to identify these feelings. And to help you do that, we're going to ask you some questions about your primary school at the moment and about your new secondary school that you're going to head to. Okay, so these questions are going to come up on the screen now. So what will you miss most about your primary school? What is the scariest thing about your new school? And what is the best thing about your new school?
Okay, so these questions are going to come up um, on the screen and I want you to spend some time answering these questions. So you might want to write down your answers. If you're in school, you might want to shout the answers out and your teacher write them on the whiteboard. If you're at home, you might want to ask a sibling or a parent or a carer to, to go through them with you. Or you might even want to ring up a friend that you go to school with and you can answer them together. So if you pause the video now and spend some time together answering these questions. Okay, well, I really hope you found that useful identifying with your feelings and really starting to think about what you've done in your previous school and what you can look forward to doing in your new school. And every year we do this activity, we always ask those same questions. And the amazing thing is, is we always come back with the same answers. And that's why we ask you to write them down or, or when we're together, we ask um, people for answers and we write them down on the board, which some of you might have done now with, with your teacher. Um, because when you look at them all there in front of you, you will soon notice that everybody's answers are similar. And that's the great thing, because when we know that we're not alone in our feelings, um, and our expectations and our anxieties going into school, we can start to, to deal with them a lot better. And if you have a look in your book that we've given you, have a look at page 10, 11, 12, and 13. And on those pages are answers that other people have given. When this has been asked to other schools, they've put them down, what their answers are. Now, just have a moment, just look at there and see how many of your answers pop up on there. I'm, I'm sh quite positive that nearly all your answers will pop up there at some point, especially when you think of the scary things you may be going to, um, like your journey to school or being bullied. That's, that always pops up. Or being left out. Um, detention, getting told off. That's one that always comes up when we talk about things to be scared with. And the teachers, getting new, new teachers and lots of different teachers. The size of the school, they're all down there and getting lost. They're all worries that come up every single year. And I'm sure you'll find some of your answers there. And things to look forward to are sports and all the new activities, all the new lessons and the new facilities you're going to have, meeting new people. That's what some others have said. And like I said, have a look at those and look at your answers. And I'm sure they'll be the same. And you will then know that you're not alone in your worries and expectations. Um, also, I want us to do something right now. If you turn to page 58 in your survival guide. There's a little page there with a blank bit and it says memories of your primary school. And what I want you guys to do, I'm going to pause the video in a minute. What I'd like you to do is to either draw a picture of your favourite memory of primary school or if you don't want to draw, why not write a poem about your favourite memory in primary school and do that and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so I hope that you found that activity fun and beneficial as well. It would be great to see your, your poems or to see your pictures. We'd love to see them. So if you're in school, please ask your teachers to send them over to Andy. Or if you're at home, you could send them over to the school as well and then they're passing over. But we'd love to, to see what you've come up with and to see your memories of primary school. And we know that at this time in your life, it can be extremely scary and very worrying as you go on to your new schools. But it's important that you really enjoy this challenge. So rather than worrying about it, you need to enjoy the experience. So to try and help ease your, your worries and your concerns, we've got some short videos of young people just like you that have been through this. And as we said earlier, they've not only survived, but they've thrived. So I hope that you find these videos good. And also you can read about them in your book on page 73 uh, to 75 of your survival guide. So have a look at them and enjoy watching the videos. The things I most enjoy about secondary school is the other activities and opportunities that I get to do. 
I think the things I most enjoy about secondary school is that I can have more freedom and I made loads of more new friends. My biggest concerns about me with school was not making friends and getting lost but they're, they're nothing to worry about now. My biggest concerns was getting lost and not knowing where I was going to go. Um, but they're not my concerns anymore and I have a lot of friends and I know my way around school. The advice I would give is that, that you shouldn't be worried because once you speak to one person you'll get more confident and speak to other people and become I think it's to not worry and to just go and try your best and um, you'll soon find that school is really fun. My favourite subject is PE because I enjoy the practical side of it. My favourite subject is music because uh, I really enjoy music and I really want to do it when I'm older. The difference Jesus makes to my secondary school experience is that he, he guides me through school, like he helps me with my schoolwork and he makes me feel safe and I've always got someone to talk to. Jesus has really changed my life being at school um, because I know that he's always by my side and he's always guiding me in school and helping me. Okay, well I really hope you found that useful and encouraging listening to all those different stories and again to know that you're not alone in your worries and concerns and excitements and expectations as well. Um, right, okay, so your new school is probably going to have a uniform that's maybe a little bit more formal than what you're used to wearing right now. And I'm quite sure that you probably even have to wear a tie. Now, some of you may know how to wear a tie, some of you may never have worn a tie, but even if you do wear a tie, I'm sure that most of the time you don't wear it that often. So, I'm going to do a little challenge right now. We're going to have a bit of a tie tie in demonstration and a competition. So, to start us off, I'm going to get Anna and Danny are going to have a tie tie off competition where they're going to race each other to see who can do their tie up the quickest. But it's not just doing it up super quick and super messy. We're going to be judging on their speed and we're going to be judging on the quality of the tie. Is that right? So, we're going to be seeing the speed and the quality. So no just flinging it all over the place. It's got to look like a tie at the end of it. So we're going to hand over to Danny and Anna and they're going to show us how to tie a tie. All right, so it's the first time I'm putting on the tie myself. Um, I found this really, really old tie in the box where we keep all of our costumes. Um, so yeah, I was watching a YouTube tutorial because I've never done it before. And it's my actually, really, it's my first try. Um, putting on a tie. So let's see how that goes. Okay, three, two, one, go. Go! Oh, here we go. <laughs> look at this. I think it doesn't look too bad, considering it's my first time. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Show it off. I think I think that's all right. It's a decent knot. It's my St Peter's side, by the way. I went to, to St Peter's primary school. Um, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> wow, that was pretty close. So who do you guys think won? There's Anna's and there's Danny's. They're looking pretty good, both of them. Anna's is a lovely spotty little tie there, but Danny with the St. Peter's tie. Mm -hmm. I'll let you guys decide who's going to be the winner of our tie challenge. Amazing. So now you've seen how good I am at tie tying and Anna as, as well, maybe. Um, so now it's your turn. So go and grab a tie and see how good you are at tie tie. And it's your turn to do the tie off. So um, see how quick you can do it, how good you are at tying your tie. And send some pictures in again to Andy. We'd love to see your ties.
Great, so how was your tie tying? Were you as good as Anna or myself at doing your ties? Um, but now what we're going to do is we've got some top tips for you for starting secondary school. So in your survival guide that you've got, starting at page 14, there are 40 top tips for you to read. So when you get a chance, have a read through them. They're super helpful for starting your secondary school experience. But here today now, we have some people who you may recognise and they're going to help you with some 10 top tips. So have a listen to these videos now. Tip number one, we're all unique. At secondary school, you'll meet all kinds of people with all kinds of personalities, and that is great. Remember that not everyone will be like you. Accept people for who they are and be comfortable with who you are. Just because you are different from someone doesn't mean you can't get along with them. Tip number two, size. In secondary school, you'll find people of all different shapes and sizes. Don't compare yourself to others. Be comfortable in what you look like and never join people who make fun of others because of their size. It's a form of bullying that can hurt people a lot more than you may think. If you see others doing that, be the one to comfort the person who's being bullied and made fun of and speak to a teacher. Tip number four, don't be angry. There might be times at school when someone says something you don't like. If that happens, take a deep breath and breathe. Try to respond calmly. No one has ever done anything sensible when they have been angry. If someone says something to annoy you, think before you speak. Tip number five, Proverbs 15 verse one. A gentle answer takes all their power away, but an angry reply just makes everything worse. Tip number six, be kind to others. Don't do anything you wouldn't like to happen to you. Make an effort to treat others the way you'd like to be treated. Tip number seven, bullying. There is no excuse for bullying of any kind. If you think you're being bullied, or someone you know is, and that includes cyberbullying online or via your phone, don't let it go on. Tell someone, a teacher, a parent, carer, or an adult you trust. Tip number eight, think before you act. Think carefully about the things that you do at school. Don't rush into doing something without first figuring out if it's the best thing to do. Tip number nine, Proverbs 13 verse 16. You'll do well if you think about what you're going to do before you do it. It never worked out well when you just rush into things to try and look good. Tip number 10, be you. Don't be afraid to be yourself. We are all unique for a reason. There's something that you have to offer to this world that no one else has. Don't waste your time comparing yourself to others or wishing you were more like someone else. Work to improve yourself, but do it because you want to be the best version of you, not a copy of someone else. Well, that was some great advice there and I hope you found that useful for you guys as you were thinking about going into secondary school and how you might be thinking about making new friends. It can seem scary but good advice there from Hannah so I hope you found that really good. Right, as we said earlier dealing with change and new things can seem really daunting and scary and one thing we know that helps us is as Christians we believe that God is with us at all times when we feel like our emotions are all over the place and we're a bit anxious and worried or scared or excited, Jesus always helps us to keep calm so we can carry on. There's a bit in the Bible that tells us of a time when Jesus was in a boat with his friends and one minute everything was calm and the next minute a big storm blew in and everything went crazy. All those in that boat were so afraid and overwhelmed by the sudden change in the weather and this storm that came then they asked Jesus to help and what happened is quite incredible. Let's watch this video and let's have a look. Stories of the Bible. Jesus calms the storm. This is Jesus. Hey -oh. Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water oh, 
and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! One day after preaching to a crowd of people, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. You got it. So they got into a boat and started out. Other boats followed him too. And as they sailed across, Jesus fell asleep. Uh -oh. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke Jesus up, shouting, Hey, Nina, wake up! Save us! We are going to drown! Don't you care if we drown? Jesus responded, Why are you afraid? You have so little faith. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and waves, saying, Silence! Be still! Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, where is your faith? The disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. Wow, what a brilliant story. It's a story that shows us that Jesus is powerful and he can do anything. He can not only calm the storm, and control the storms of nature, but he can control the storms in our lives too. Now, I don't know if you believe in God or not, but I hope this will give you a chance to maybe think about things. It's, it's good to take time to consider what we believe in and how you will deal with the challenges that you may be facing ahead. Jesus made a big difference to his friends when they faced that storm in the boat. He not only calmed their storm by stopping the winds and the waves, but he calmed their fears about the change. Jesus makes a big difference in my life too. Whenever I'm scared or daunted by, by changes or challenges that come up, and I feel like my emotions are jumping all over the place, I know Jesus is with me and he loves me. And even in the worst storm, he will bring calm if I trust him. I believe that Jesus can do that for you too. I wonder what you think. Let's just close our eyes for a moment and reflect on what that means to us. Perhaps you could think about some concerns or worries that you've got as you think about going to secondary school. And Do you believe that God can help you with that? Do you believe that Jesus could make a difference to you like he does to me and the people we've heard in our stories today? Just have a think of those worries that you may have. And maybe now or later on you can start to think about how you can overcome those worries and how you can deal with them and hopefully some of the things that we've said will help you think of ways to do that. Okay, I'm just going to pray right now and I'm not going to ask you to pray along but I'm, I'm going to ask you if you want to to just say Amen at the end of this prayer and Amen just literally means that you agree with what I'm saying. Um, so if you don't, just don't say Amen but if you do, join with me and say Amen. Is that okay? Right. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Um, we thank you that we can come to Jesus and that he wants to be our friend in the middle of that storm. Thank you that uh, we can turn to you in any worry and any anxiety and any time, any change, anything that's going on in our lives. We can turn to you and we can trust that you will not only calm the storms around us, but you will calm the storms in our lives. So Jesus, we ask you now as we look towards this massive change of going into secondary school, that you will help us to know that you are with us, help us to know that you will take us through this transition and that you will be with us every step of the way and that you will calm the storms that are to come and you will calm the storms right now in our hearts and in our lives. And we pray on this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so now we're going to look at how ready are you? Okay, so I asked this question, how ready are you for your move to secondary school? So in your survival guide, if you turn to page 68 and 69, there's a few different dilemmas for you to have a look at 
and to answer as well. So what you can do is read through them and answer them as honestly as you can, okay? It's just a bit of fun, this is for you. Don't look at the pink box, don't look at what the answers are, okay? And once you've answered them all, you can then look at your score using that pink box and it tells you um, how ready you are for secondary school. So you add up all your scores and it tells you how ready you are for secondary school. As I said, this is only a bit of fun. Please don't take it too seriously. Uh, there's some silly answers in there, but it's just, uh, yeah, it's just some fun for us to have. So if you pause the video now and answer these questions and then we'll come back together in a minute. Well, that's it. Our time is up. We hope you've been encouraged and I hope you found that useful as you think about your move into secondary school. And we hope there's given you a little bit more confidence to take that with excitement um, and expectation of what's to come, the exciting things that are to come. Don't forget to use your It's Your Move Secondary School Survival Guide. There's some really good top tips. I'm sure you've flicked through them already. Um, there's some really, really good games, good things you can do, um, and great advice as well in there. So please use that, it's your book. Scribble on it, write on it, draw on it, use it however it helps you. Um, and we just want you to be encouraged and we want you to benefit from all the all, the, all, the, all other people's uh, experiences that are in here as you go forward, um, which should be amazing, right? One thing we've talked about today is about friendship and making new friends. And I know lots of you are thinking, oh, I'm going to a different school than my friends or this friend, and you're possibly going to lose contact or potentially lose contact. Um, so right now, Danny's going to come back up and she's going to talk about our group here at Heswell Parish called Impact, which is for 11 to 14 year olds, which can hopefully help you stay connected. Yeah, so Impact is an amazing group. Um, I am biased, I would say that because I run it, um, but it's a great group for 11 to 14 year olds where lots of young people come together from different schools um, and we meet up at St. Peter's Centre um, when we can. At the moment, we've been meeting on Zoom and that might continue. We're just, we're not 100% sure yet, um, but as soon as we're able to, we're gonna meet at St. Peter's Centre, we eat toast, we eat cake, we play games and we, we chat with each other. Um, we talk about, about how amazing Jesus is as well and about each other's lives. And it's a great time to be with your friends. Um, some of you watching, you may already be joining with us at Impact, which is great. So if you are, please, please tell your friends about how good it is. Um, we meet on Wednesdays after school and we meet on Sundays during um, our church services as well. As I said, we're not 100% sure what that's going to look like next term, but as soon as we do, um, we, will, we will let you know. And we love having new people, everyone's so friendly, and it's just a great environment. So all the information uh, that you need for now, or that we have is, is on this flyer. Uh, my number's on there and my email address, so please, if you are interested in joining, ask your parents uh, to email or to, to text or to ring me um, and I'll give all the information that I can but Impact is, is just an amazing group so please please think about joining uh, so you can carry on seeing your friends that are going to different schools to you. Thank you Danny that sounds amazing and I know my daughter goes to Impact and she absolutely loves it um, so yeah Come along, make sure you get in touch with Danny. Her email is at the bottom of the screen. It's gonna stay there uh, for a little bit in case you didn't get a chance to write it down. There it is, get it down. Tell your mums, dads, carers, anybody, just to send her an email and then Danny will get back to you and let you know what the score is in September. Amazing, well, from both of us, we wanna say goodbye. We hope you've enjoyed this time being with us, uh, doing this It's Your Move. And we want to say to you, we really in hope that you enjoy your next six years in secondary school, or maybe more. Um, and they don't just survive, but that you really, really thrive. And it is some of the most enjoyable time of your life. 
Um, are we excited to see the people that you are going to grow into because we know that you are all made amazingly and God has great plans for you all. I'm really excited to see what he's going to do um, as you move forward from here. But for now, we want to say thank you. For, for me personally, I want to say thank you for allowing me to, to be part of your school journey with you when we've done collective worships or whether we've done assemblies or whether it's been after school clubs. Um, I've loved spending time with you and I've got to know uh, a lot of you and it's, we, we, we're going to miss you. Um, but I know you're going to do amazing things. So um, we'll keep praying for you. Um, and yeah, see you soon.